guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna share with you how to make a fall tiered tray from start to finish and I'm gonna show you how to make 13 of the items that are on it and then two of the items that are on it my gnome and my little sweater pumpkins I'll put a link to those videos below so you, if you want to watch those too if you want to how to make them stick around I show you how thanks for watching love you guys Okay, I got these two plates at Hobby Lobby, and then I got this martini glass at Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to wipe it down with alcohol really good just to get anything off of it that was on it. Then go ahead and flip your plate over and put your glass on it, and go ahead and take a Sharpie and draw a circle around it so you know exactly where it's going to be glued to when you get ready to glue it together. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and take some little pine cones. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up. Now, fill it up all the way. You don't want any gaps in there, so make sure you get it as full as it can be, and but still be able to set flat. Okay, next we're just going to take some E6000 glue, just put it all the way around the um, lid of that, the ledge of that, and then we're going to attach it to our plate. Now, you want to probably come down at an angle and look and make sure you got it in the circle, flip it over, and put some weights on it. Next, I'm going to take two um, rulers, I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to try to find the center so I can make a mark so I can put my base down. Just go ahead and put some E6000 glue all the way around the bottom, and then just glue that down. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with the top of two rulers, find the center point, and I'm going to, I got a finial at um, Hobby Lobby, and I just painted it to put on the center of it. Just glue it right in the center. We got our tray done. We're going to accessorize it. I'm just taking a little cutting board from Hobby Lobby. I'm getting a Hello um, Fall sign from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to paint it with a Waverly Pumpkin chalk paint. Then I'm going to take some um, jute and I'm going to put it all the way around the edge of my um, cutting board and I'm going to go ahead and get all the little strands off of it right here before I put it on. This just cleans it up and makes it a lot nicer looking. Then starting at the bottom center, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing it around. Just kind of make sure that you kind of got it centered on the side too. And then you're going to have to run it through this loop right here to get it through to go to the other side. Okay, then I'm just taking a buffalo um, checked ribbon and I'm just going to tie a bow around the top part. And I got this buffalo check ribbon at uh, Hobby Lobby. And then my Hello Fall didn't pop up off the tray, so I went ahead and I'm taking some of the um, Waverly Wax, um, the Antique Wax, and I'm just putting it around the edges of all the little letters. And it kind of helped it pop, off, pop a little bit better off of the um, cutting board. Then I'm just going to go ahead and take some hot glue and glue it on. And then I'm coming back in with a couple little strands of um, greenery and I'm just sticking it up at the very top. Just kind of glue them together and just glue them up underneath that ribbon. All right, pretty easy. Now I'm going to take one of these little boards from Dollar Tree and I'm going to scrape all of the paper off of it so I just have a board. If you put some water on it and get a, a razor, it comes off pretty quick and easy. Then I'm taking three sets of words from the Dollar Tree and I'm just kind of evenly spacing them onto my board and then I'm going to mark them and I'm going to cut my board into thirds. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and paint it with Waverly Chalk White paint. That's a cottage white. I'm going to paint the front, the back, and the sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my letters and I'm going to start painting those. And I'm painting um, one a mineral color um, from Waverly Chalk paint. And then I'm doing one in moss, and then I'm doing one in pumpkin. Okay, then I'm going to take my board, and it's a little bit fuzzy in the picture here. I don't know what happened to my focusing, but I'm just taking that same um, Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just rubbing it around the edges and across the front. And then I'm just going to take some um, Tombow glue, and I'm just going to glue it on. Now, you can use hot glue if you want to. I just didn't want so much oozing between my letters, so I'm using the Tombow glue instead. Or you can use Elmer's, either one. Just glue them all on. Next, I'm just going to make a string of beads, and I'm just taking some lamb's ear um, greenery from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to wrap a jute all the way around it just to hold it together and go ahead and glue it on. 
And you can make your stringer however long you want to. I'm just making mine long enough just to kind of hang over the edge of my tray a little bit. Okay, and then go ahead and pull off however much um, thread you're going to use or how much jute you're going to use and then just go ahead and start threading your beads. Once you got them all strung, go ahead and glue the last bead to that jute. This will just keep it to be tight when you're actually tying off the other end of the jute. Okay, then we're going to just tie off this end as well. Just tie it as close to that bead as you can and tie it a couple of times. And then we're going to make our tassel. We're just going to wrap our, our jute around a piece of wood or, some, or a piece of cardboard or whatever you pick about 30 times on this one. You can make yours however thick or however how thin you want to. I did about 30 wraps there. And then I'm just going to run my jute from my stringer through the, the, through the back of this. And I'm going to tie off the top part. Just tie it as tight as you can. And then go ahead and take it off of there. And then we're going to come down probably about a half an inch from the top edge. And we're just going to start wrapping that jute all the way around there just to kind of to finish out our tassel. Just kind of hold it tight and then go ahead and start wrapping it around. And then just go ahead and tie that off. You're just going to have to run it through another piece of string and then tie that off. And then we're going to glue that in place as well. And then just go ahead and cut the opening open and then go ahead and even those out. And next I'm just going to make a little pillow for my tray. I'm taking a ten and a half by five and a quarter inch piece of fabric and I'm just gluing down the two sides, the bottom and one side. Just go ahead and push it down because you want your glue to lay flat. Next we're going to go ahead and fold over the top edge about a quarter of an inch and we're going to go ahead and iron it. And this will make it a little bit easier to glue when you after you get it full. Okay, next go ahead and cut your corners, just the tip of the corner off of those, and then turn it right side out, pushing your corners out. And then we're going to go ahead and um, glue up about an inch and a half from the side of the top, just to make it a little bit easier once we get it full to finish closing it up. And then I'm just going to add some um, little rocks to it. This is like um, vase filler, just enough to make it stand up. And then I'm just going to fill the rest of it with a polyfill. And fill it up pretty full because you want your pillow to be pretty full. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and continue gluing the top. Now I'm going to take a pin and pin it kind of halfway through the middle right there. Go ahead and glue that part. And then I'm going to move it over a little bit. And then I'm going to glue another side. If you do it section at a time, it goes together pretty easy. And then just go ahead and smooth it out. Okay, next I'm going to take a little um, house um, cutout that I got at Amazon. I'll give you the link to that. I'm adding one of the little Jenga blocks that I got at Dollar Tree. And this is just going to be to make it stand up. And then I'm going to paint the entire thing with a Waverly chalk, um, chalk paint in the cottage white. And you want to make sure you get the front, the back, and the sides on this. Then I'm coming in with that same antique um, wax from Waverly and I'm just going to go ahead and do the sides and then I'm going to get a lot of this off of my rag and then I'm just going to kind of rub it through the center as well just to kind of give it a little distressed look. Okay, next I got this little rub on decal at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go ahead and rub this right on there. And this stuck really good to the wood. Okay, next I'm just going to take a piece of jute string and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and I'm just going to tie a bow in the corner. Ok, 
Okay, next I'm just going to take a, a bundle of wheat and I'm just going to take some jute ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to wrap it around. And I'm going to wrap it around enough times so that it's thick in the bottom and it can stand up by itself. I probably wrapped mine around about 10 times. And then just going to go ahead and glue that off. And then I'm going to take another piece of jute string and I'm going to tie it around the front part of it. And then I'm going to cut the bottom off. Just kind of wrap it around a few times and then tie it in a bow. And then just cut all those off. I mean, I'm just going to kind of fan mine open a little bit. Next, I'm going to make some pumpkin pie fake bake slices, and I'm just taking some Sculpey 3 clay in beige, and then I'm taking some Craft Smart clay in terracotta that I got at Michael's. Both of these are oven baked clays. Just going to go ahead and roll that. Um, that's the crust part, and I'm going to roll it out kind of thin, and I'll show you here on the side how thick it was. And then I'm cutting it with a two and a quarter inch cookie cutter, just a round cutter. And just kind of push it in there and twist it because you want to try to keep this put together pretty easy. And then go ahead and roll out the orange and do the same thing. Now we're doing the orange about twice as thick as we did the crust because we want it to have a little bit more meat in there. And then just push that on too and just twist it. It makes it a little bit easier if you twist it. Okay, then I'm going to take some. Um, oven bake glue from Sculpey and I'm just going to put a little bit onto the bottom part and attach the top part to it. This will just help it adhere to when you bake it. And then you're going to bake this um, after you get all these slices cut at 275 degrees for 15 minutes. And we're just going to cut this into half and kind of just wiggle that down on in there. You don't want to push too hard. And then we're going to do a half again. And then we're going to do um, diagonals. So we're going to cut this into eight pieces. And then go ahead and separate them before you um, bake them. And just make sure that the, the bottom's um, even on the top. Just make sure they're even all the way around. And then bake them. Next, so we're just going to put a backing on the back of each one of these slices. So you're just going to cut a piece to go on the back. And then we're going to push it onto it so it stays after it bakes. That's why it's good to go ahead and do this in sections instead of all together because you do, you, this, the other piece is hard and you can get the other piece pushed onto it without damaging the other piece. Just go ahead and push it around the bottom and push it around the top. Now don't worry about uh, getting on the top so much perfect because we are going to come back in and put a top crust. And just keep doing that to all the pieces. Okay, next we're just going to take two one inch balls and we're just going to roll them out into a snake. And we're going to make the crust with this. You're going to roll two of them out and then we're going to um, twine and intertwine them. Okay, so just go ahead and attach them together and then just start twisting them all the way down. Try to get it as even as you can too. And you just want to roll it out enough just to get it for each one of those little pie pieces. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and cut off the end and we're just going to cut little slices of it to put on top of the pie. Just kind of push it down just a little bit and then go ahead and attach it. And then kind of have to smooth out the um, edges to make sure it is adhered to that pie. And do the same thing for all of them. Then you're going to bake them again for 15 minutes at 275 degrees. Okay, next to make the whipped cream, I'm just rolling up some pea-sized little balls of the white 
Sculpey Clay, and I'm just doing some little curve marks in here just to kind of make it look like a whipped cream. And then I'm just going to put them on my pie. And I'm going to take some of the oven bake um, adhesive as well and glue that onto each one of those before I bake them. Then again, you're going to bake them at 15 minutes for 275 degrees. Okay, then I got these little parfait um, cups at Amazon. They actually have a domed lid on it, but by the time I got the pumpkin pie into this, it would not shut. So it has a hole in the middle of it, and I'm just covering it up with a piece of plastic. Just cut it in the circle, and then just go ahead and put your pumpkin pie in there. It looks really cute on your tray. Okay, next I'm gonna make a couple of little lattes and I'm just taking these little mugs that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm just tracing a circle onto the back of some cardboard and I'm gonna cut that out to go inside of that to hold my latte. So go ahead and cut it out on the inside part of it because you want it small enough to sit down inside that mug. And we're gonna put some floral foam in there as well just to hold that up. So just cut your floral foam just to size so you can put that little circle on top of it. And push it on down in there because you want that to not, you want that little circle to be down inside of that cup just a little bit. And then we're going to take them back out and we're just going to glue them in. And then we're going to glue our circles onto those, um, to that foam. And then I'm going to take two little styrofoam balls that are real close to the same size as that circle. And I'm going to cut it in half. And I need a little bit of overhang on the, on the little um, cardboard. So I'm going to take the circle, I mean the, the styrofoam, I'm going to roll it real hard so I can make it a little bit smaller. If you just roll it for a little bit, it'll get a little bit smaller. You just want to be able to see the little ledge on the outside of that cardboard. And then we're just going to glue those to the cardboard. And next, I'm just going to take a piping bag and I'm going to cut the tip off and I'm going to put my tip on inside of there. And I think that's a number two is what they call that tip. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with this um, Fast and Final. It's a spackling that I got at Lowe's. And I like this one because it's real white. You can use the one at the Dollar Tree, but it does dry with a, with a gray tint to it. And just fill it up pretty full because we're going to use quite a bit. And you can always put back what you don't use. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull my bag on up, and I'm going to take a rubber band to tie it off. And just take your time on this and kind of squeeze a little bit, you know, kind of do some design, like squeeze it out, push it up forward like that. And then I'm sorry I got out of the picture here in a minute, but I added another video on the sides. So you can see how I did the top. So you're just going to go all the way around, still kind of squirting it out a little bit, you know, kind of taking your time so that you do get some nice dollops. And then when you get to the very, very top, you're just going to make one big dollop on the top. And then do the same thing with the other one, and then we're going to decorate them. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take a, one of those pieces of pumpkin and a cinnamon stick. I'm going to break my cinnamon stick in half and I'll put it in kind of like a, two straws. And then I'm going to take one of the little pie pieces and I'm just going to stick it in there as well. And then do the same thing for the other one. Okay, then I'm just taking a little bit of cinnamon and just sprinkling it all over the top. Okay, next, I'm just going to take a plain tile and I'm going to add another one of those rub on um, stickers or decals from Dollar Tree. Just kind of center it in the middle, rub it on. And they really do well on these tiles. Okay, on this one, I just took a um, little rolling pin I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to paint it with the chalk um, white, cottage white paint. And then I'm just going to cover it with a um, napkin. I got these napkins at um, Home goods, just take the back off of them and then just going to cut it out exactly the same shape or the same size as that uh, rolling pin. And we're just going to mod podge this straight onto the rolling pin.
and just put your Mod Podge on and just go ahead and get it lined up. Since it, since it is a stripe or a check, you will see if you don't get it straight. And then just go ahead and put um, Mod Podge all over it and then roll it up. All of these are really quick and easy projects and they all look really good together. So then I'm just going to take a ribbon and I'm just going to go ahead and tie a bow on each end. I think this tray turned out amazing. The little leather pumpkins I'm showing here, I got those at Dollar Tree. The little gnome, I'll give you the link to the video if you want to make that. Um, I bought some bales of hay from Dollar Tree, and that's what's holding my sign setting up off the tray. The little green um, pumpkin um, candle, I got that at Target. And then the little um, sweater pumpkins that are in the back, I, I made those too, and I have a video. I'll link to that video as well. So overall, I think it turned out really good. If you like the video, hit like. If you want to see future videos, hit subscribe. And if you want to be notified when I have another video, hit the bell. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.